What's going on guys? My name is Hussein and yes, we have discussed this before. Uh, I'm going to reference the video. We discussed MariaDB having a little bit of a trouble when on startup with the number of transactions per second. Uh, when I made that video on this article written by, by the way, uh, Vlad, I believe, uh, Vadim, I'm sorry, Vadim, who's the uh, basically co-founder of Persona, uh, he wrote this, they wrote this article discussing this idea where MySQL, you can see that the number of transactions per second hitting that the database, it's almost like flat, right? On what, 12,000, 15,000 transactions per second, which is pretty good, right? Compared to MariaDB, both versions, right? Version 5.4, you can see this dip. And version 5.5, you can also see this dip starting up, right? Well, the uh, one of the maintainer of MariaDB named... Uh, Marco Makella actually responded, and I and and we think we know why this is happening. So this is what I'm going to discuss in this video. And uh, guys, I like to discuss these things because man, every time you read one of these articles, you get a little bit of a new piece of information, and you, as a result, learn more. And and I am learning so much from these comments and these articles and. and and we're growing uh, every day and, and learning about specific backend engineering and database engineering concepts. So this one is, was really, really interesting. So here's what happened. Let's talk about, first of all, when we, in a database, in a relational database, when we insert a new row, we keep track uh, at the transaction level what transaction modified the row. So if you start modifying the row, that row will be visible, the new change will be visible to only that transaction, right? So other transactions reading the row will not be able to read that modified row. This is to perform, um, basically, to avoid dirty reads, to, abo uh, to avoid non-repeatable reads. These are called the isolation levels, which I talked about uh, right here, guys, check out the asset video uh, if you want to learn more about uh, isolation and stuff like that. But yeah, that's what we do. And and how do we technically, if you if you today want to implement something like that, how do you do it? You basically have some property alongside the row that says, hey, this is the transaction ID that I modified it. This is the transaction ID I have modified it. So imagine loading this new data set, right? And you kind of start seeing stream of transactions, so many transactions just hammering on these inserts, right? So what happened here, you, you will have different history of the rows. So, so this row has been modified, and then it has been modified again, and then it has been modified again. So you have a history of, of transactions that have modified the row, right? So technically, if now I want to read the row, which version I should draw, I'll read? Should I read the, the new version? First of all, which transaction am I? Am I this transaction? Am I this transaction? Right? Am I am I just an outsider? So determining which which version of the row to read is expensive because you have to scan uh, these transactions. And Marco actually talked about this very very elegantly right here. And and uh, he's referencing some uh, uh, articles and and uh, bugs that have basically talking about the DBTRX. ID column, which is hidden, right? So this this is the, the transaction ID essentially that uh, represent what transaction actually last modified this row. So so the problem with this is to avoid the, we're doing lookups and all transaction to speeding up uh, the the non locking reads, right? So we're re, we're doing these lookups. Right to to uh, to have essentially determine which version of the row it is right, and here's here's what happened. So as once you load this database, right? So before we run the the benchmark, we start loading these hundred GB worth of data, right? And this history still exists. These transactions technically in MariaDB still exist. Right? And the rows are marked with, hey, transaction number seven, transaction number nine. And here's what happened. 
when you when when Vadim he talked about this, he's like, okay, here's what I did. So I was like, what did what did you do? I load the data, I didn't wait for any internal process to finish. I stopped the database immediately, I made a backup. So he made a backup while in that state where we have all this dirty pages and history about the rows and the transactions. So now, MariaDB have a cleanup process called purging. And, and it was actually doing that while, while it was running, right? But we didn't give it enough time to actually finish. So when we made a backup, we backed it into this half state where it's, it's in a cleaning mode. So when we start back the database to run the benchmark, the, MariaDB was busy actually purging the rows. Why? Because it says, well, these rows are not are, are already visible to all readers. They are visible to all transactions. So technically, we don't need this transaction ID column. So let's set it to zero and let's purge all and other instances of the row if it exists, right? This is the final version of the row, right? There, nobody's editing anything, right? This is the final version of the data, right? Nobody, there are no edits, right? Uh, there are no other transaction actually in process. They, everything has been committed. Everything is done. No one is actually reading, right? So, and if there are new reader, all readers will be visible, uh, all the row will be visible to all readers and all transactions. So might as well just let's start cleaning this process up. So just let's set this transaction to zero. So we essentially avoid this extra cost of reading uh, the transaction and finding out which row it's, it's, uh, it's correspond to and, and uh, avoid this locking stuff, right? So oh, I shouldn't be reading this version. Uh, because other, uh, I can't modify this version because other transaction is actually locking it. You don't have to do any of that stuff with the database. So it's just faster, All right? So the cleaning process is this dip. That's, it looks like this is it from what I, from what I got gathered. Again, that maybe uh, he will go through and, and actually, uh, uh, there's a recommendation from Marco here to when, you want to, to assure a stable and clean state in the database, set the global AnnoDB, which is the storage engine of MariaDB by default, fast shutdown equals zero. So it doesn't really just shut down in that state. It should shut down after the purge is completing. And after the purge is completed, that means we will get into a state where everything is, 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 com is totally clean and all these transaction IDs in the row will be zero. That means the row is visible to everyone. So new readers will not take the hit to, to, to essentially uh, 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 look up the transaction ID and, and manage the locks and do all that stuff, right? Guys, I'm not an expert in, in database management and what is going on there. I know enough to talk about it. If I said anything wrong, and database engineer, correct me in the comment section below. I'll, I'll be glad to be corrected if I said anything wrong. But yeah, it looks like this is the dip. This, this is what's happening. So technically, this is not a fair comparison in this case. And you might say, saying, why don't we have this problem with MySQL? That's a good question. I, MySQL is basically now is a different database, guys, from MariaDB, to be honest. It is uh, as being forked long, forked long time ago. And MariaDB has different choices when it comes to AnnoDB engine. They make they implement different, uh, uh, different uh, work and stuff like that. I'm gonna talk about in another video why version, what why MariaDB is actually performing worse in certain cases in MySQL. And uh, this is this is this actually this article, which is uh, not article. This is actually a this is their bug Jira, which is their bug management system. And it's fascinating to read about this, to learn from the expert and, and just see how people think and how they real, real, real developers actually tackle these difficult decisions. I just love to read this stuff. I'm learning so much from everyone here. And again, thank, thank you, Vadim, for, uh, I hope you're pronoun I'm pronouncing your name right, Vadim, 
So thank you, Vadim, for uh, for these great articles. Just just comparing these things, right? And there, are guys, uh, if you are, I'm gonna make another video talking about CPU bound versus I/O bound because unfortunately uh, there are no no article discussing that. It just assumes that you know this stuff. I definitely didn't know the difference between CPU bound and I/O bound and until I read these articles and actually dive deep, deep into them, right? But uh, let's, uh, I'm gonna discuss this in an, another video. What do you guys think about this? Uh, do you think uh, that MySQL essentially has different, uh, because like, let's think that, does, this doesn't mean that MariaDB is bad, right? Because that particular test is just stopping the database in an inconsistent state, right? Maybe MySQL doesn't have this cleaning mechanism, right? which the, the optimization way we talked about, it just deals with things differently. But that dip doesn't mean that you ha, you're, not, you're gonna hit this dip in production, to be honest, right? So I don't think this is a great problem, to be a, a, a big problem, to be honest, in MariaDB, because you see, you see this almost very similar performance What This is a big problem, and, and actually it's being fixed uh, with this bug, right? Uh, and this bug, it's, it's actually being addressed right now. It's so fascinating to see the track of bugs and what fixes, which decision MariaDB takes actually affects other stuff in the future. And, but I think eventually it will converge and will, will result in a, in a better performance database uh, in general. But that's my opinion. What do you guys think? I'm gonna uh, see you in the next one. You guys stay awesome. Goodbye, and thank you for everyone maintaining this uh, product.